Yeah, yeah, blah, blah, blah. The devil is a liar. He tried to, 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 to break our uh, worship, but we're going to continue to worship him. If you're on the live, just come back on. The enemy is just trying to, to, to thwart this, this, this live right now. Keep on coming back on. Keep on praying, saints. Come on, keep praying, keep praying, keep praying. Thank you, Jesus. We break the power of the enemy right now. We bind up every demon spirit coming against this line. Right now, I break the power of Satan over this line. See, the devil doesn't want you to hear the God. The devil doesn't want you to get in God's presence because he knows in, in God's presence is the fullness of joy and in his right hand there are pleasures forevermore. See, he wants to keep you stuck in that place where you're not in the secret place of the Most High. You're stuck in your mind. You're not able to get peace. See, the devil is a liar. And I prophesy God is about ready to bruise Satan under your feet right now. The devil is a liar. He doesn't want you to get in the fullness of his presence because that pleasure is going to come. I prophesy to people right now. Arise, God, to your rest. Hallelujah. We thank you, Lord. We just welcome you. We praise you. We break the powers of hell over this line in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. We thank you for people coming on. We glory in your presence, Lord. The devil is a liar. He will not take this life. He will not take your blessing. He will not take your prophecy. He will not take your miracle today. God's got some miracles coming on this line. I prophesy miracles. Glory, Lata, uh, Dorsey Cox. God bless everybody coming on the line. Just come on the line. Feel we just pray for the glory to continue to fill this place. I see the train of the road filling the temple of this line. The Lord is rising. Come on. Come on. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Let the fire of the Holy Ghost fall. Let the fire of your glory, the fire of your glory, your glory of your presence, Lord, is on this line. Thank you. Let us embrace it today. The Lord said, embrace my glory. Get used to feeling my glory because we're going to pull you away from the devil's camp. Come on, somebody. Somebody went on into the devil's camp. The enemy was trying to take you in the devil's camp. But the Lord said, I'm pulling you back over on this side. Hallelujah. We thank you, Lord. We praise you. See, the enemy's trying to really thwart this, uh, this Facebook Live. He's trying to break it. But we're going to continue to pray. Keep praying, saints. Keep praying. Keep praying. We thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Jesus. We praise you. We thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Continue to pray. Continue to pray. Continue to pray. There's something coming out against the mind of the believers. This is a good song right now. That there's a lot coming against the mind of believers. Come on, somebody. This is a song I want you to look up by uh, Terry McCallum. It's called The Glory of His Presence. And just begin to soak in this. After this live today, I want you to soak in this song. So we just continue to thank you for this song, God. We thank you for your glory, your presence. We worship you. We praise you for the glory of your presence on this line, Lord. I thank you, Jesus, that you loosed us from the pains of death. Because it was not possible for the Lord Jesus to be held by the pains of death. I want you to understand the Lord raised again from the dead on the third day and he loosed us from the pains of death and so i want you to know that there's sin and death that worketh in your members that is keeping you bound the lord has already set you free i want you to look at this in hebrews chapter uh, 2 verse 9 but we see jesus who was made a little lower listen to this than the angels and he suffered death and he was crowned with glory and honor that he hallelujah uh, that he should not be held and to taste death for every man. So it is Jesus Christ who has tasted death for every man. It says in Hebrews 2 and 10, because it be who became him for who are all things, that by whom are all things, that bringing many sons and daughters and giving them uh, to be perfect over the, them 
to make them the captain of his their salvation, meaning Jesus as the captain of, of our salvation, he made them perfect through suffering. And look at this, Hebrews 2 and 4, it says, God also bearing them witness, and he's talking about the apostles and the prophets. This is how God bears witness that he has loosed us from the pains of death. He has sent us prophets and apostles, he said. He has sent us uh, sent ones. He said, God also bearing them witness with signs and wonders. Hallelujah and diverse gifts and miracles of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. That he does according to his own will. So the Lord gives uh, a witness to who he is with signs and wonders and miracles. And so he also says, I want you to read this. Get your Bible out for one second and look at this. I want you to see this really quick. It says this. We know that the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy, okay? I want you to read this. This is powerful. Revelation 19 and 10. You've heard this scripture many times, but I want you to hear it, uh, hear it in the spirit, okay? Listen to this. Revelation 19 and 9, and we see 9 19 all the time. This is those who are going to be uh, invited to the marriage supper of the Lamb. When Jesus is inviting his bride to the marriage supper, okay? Revelation 19 9, it says unto, he said unto me, blessed, right? Blessed are those which are called unto the marriage supper of the Lamb. He says unto thee, these are the true sayings of God. Now mark this down, uh, Revelation 19 and 10. And I fell to worship him at his feet. And he said unto me, see thou doest not, because I am thy fellow servant that have the testimony of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Listen, worship God for the testimony of Jesus is a spirit of prophecy. Hallelujah. So if, if, if we have prophets out here that are not testifying about Jesus, that's not a, a true spirit of prophecy. And I want to give you another interpretation of that uh, in the ESV or the, the BBE, which is a basic Bible in English. It says, and I went, I went on my face before his feet to worship him. And he said to me, see that thou do it not. I am thy brother a servant uh, with you and with your brothers. He said, you, um, he said, with your brothers who keep the witness, he said, if he said, and, and it can be interpreted witness of Jesus. And he said, give worship to God for the witness of Jesus is the spirit of the prophet's words. Okay. So the witness of Jesus is the spirit of the prophet's word. That that's what it means to say the testimony of Jesus Christ is the spirit of prophecy. And so, it is the witness of Jesus when we prophesy. It is the witness of Jesus' word coming out of the prophet. It is literally a testimony that has been birthed in the prophet to the very testimony he was birthed with in his mother's womb. So when he told Jeremiah 1 and 5, uh, before, I, before you were born or formed in your mother's womb, I knew you and I ordained you and sanctified you a prophet to the nations. So that means he put a testimony in you in your mother's womb. You look at Psalm 139, he talked about he knows me personally. He said uh, that he brought me in the secret parts and the lower parts of the earth and it said that he knew me intimately and it said that he put this very testimony which is a scribal scroll into your body into your stomach and so that's why when you begin to birth a word there's there's a word called prophetic accuation which means that you begin to accuate it means you begin to birth something and you also get what's called pms uh, in the in the spirit, PMS is like women have uh, a, a, a menstrual cycle, but PMS is prophetic mood swings, meaning you're you're getting mood swings because uh, you're about ready to birth a word. You're about ready to birth the testimony of Jesus that you were birthed with, that God formed you in your mother's womb with, and it's a scroll that came down. That's why he told uh, John the Revelator that there's going to be a scroll coming down to eat the whole scroll. It'll be like honey in your mouth, but it'll be bitter in your stomach because it's a, it's a it's a scroll it's a testimony of Jesus as a spirit of prophecy and so to know that it is Jesus that is the spirit of prophecy it's testifying of Jesus it's the witness of Jesus that is the spirit of prophecy it should always lead people back to Jesus when we prophesy over people it should always lead them back to Jesus and we should always uh lead people to uh, the Lord. And it said Hebrews 2.15. Stay in that same chapter. Hebrews 2.15. And it said it is to deliver them. Why did Jesus suffer death? Look at this. Hebrews 2.9. He suffered death for every man. So that you didn't have to taste death. And look at uh, Hebrews 2.5. To deliver them. Listen to this. People of God. 
It says to deliver them who through the fear of death have all their lives been in bondage. So what is it that bonds people is the fear of death? Listen, why does God want to give you eternal life so that you will never die? You can never fear death again because once you're born again and you have the new life in this world, you will never die. You're, you already got eternal life. You don't have to wait to go, die and go to heaven that Jesus loosed the pains of death. And that means death is the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Christ Jesus. So that means that death has no more dominion over you, Romans 8. So it means that death is where sickness comes in. Death is where poverty comes in. Death is where what is coming against your life is the wages of sin and death. And so it is, it is Romans 8 that talks about that you, you have to crucify the flesh. It talks about uh, Galatians 2.20. Uh, he says that I crucify, I am crucified with Christ, yet I live, yet not I, but Christ who lives in me. And the life that I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith, what, of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. So I crucify the flesh that the faith or the testimony of Jesus Christ, the spirit of prophecy, can move through me. So this is something that I'm prophesying to the prophets, that you wanted to prophesy more. You wanted to move more in healing and miracles. But look at this, Hebrews 2, 4, God who bearing them witness. Listen, listen, he bears you witness both with signs and wonders and with diverse miracles and gifts of the Holy Ghost according to his will so it is according to god's will but we look at uh first corinthians 12 he says as he wills he will divide severally uh different gifts but that doesn't necessarily always mean as the holy ghost wills it means as you're willing as you're a willing visit vessel the lord will give you gifts okay so that is why he said covet earnestly spiritual gifts okay that is the only word we see in the bible where he says covet something uh for good it always means something bad because the word in the greek for covet there covet earnestly spiritual gifts but rather that you may prophesy okay so he's saying that word in the greek means zelio it means literally uh, to be zealous zealous of spiritual gifts and he said yet i will show you a more excellent way first corinthians 12 31 but covet earnestly the best gifts and yet i will show you a more excellent way so he's saying i want you to covet gifts i want you to covet and want supernatural gifts but don't let the gift um you know overtake the testimony of jesus christ which is the spirit of prophecy man i could go into a whole class on first corinthians 14 right on this line but i'm here to prophesy more for people but the lord wanted to release this i don't know because there's some prophets some people on here that needed to hear this hallelujah and so it is covet earnestly means be zealous of spiritual gifts but rather that you may prophesy why because him who speaks in tongues speaks unto men not unto men but unto god not unto men but unto god he speaks mysteries in the spirit hallelujah first corinthians 14 2 but he says for first corinthians 14 3 that those who prophesy speak unto men unto exhortation edification and comfort hallelujah so uh, why don't you see me speak a lot in tongues on, on Facebook Lives? Because Paul said I'd rather speak uh, five words and, and that men could hear me and I could edify them than speak a thousand words, ten thousand words in tongues. Okay, but I can pray in tongues and interpret it on the line. Now, don't misunderstand the interpretation of tongues. The interpretation of tongues doesn't mean somebody stands up in a congregation and speaks in a tongue and somebody prophesies. Uh, interprets the tongue and that's a prophecy no that's a prophecy you just get up and prophesy you don't need to interpret the tongue what a tongue is is as it says that we don't speak unto men we speak unto god in a mystery okay so when somebody interprets someone's tongue they get up and they interpret what the person is praying to god what is the mystery that they're praying, right? So so if I get up and I interpret your tongue, it is what you are saying to God, not what you're saying to the congregation. My God, somebody got to catch this in the realm of the spirit. Uh, this is the, the true interpretation of tongues. It's what you're speaking to God, not what God is speaking to you. My God, thank you, Jesus. 
Thank you, Lord. So, so when you interpret a tongue, it means that you're interpreting what the spirit of the person is, is, is praying to God. A lot of times it'll be a song of the Lord that they're singing a song to God. Oh Lord, you are so great. You are worthy to be praised. Hallelujah. You are great and you're marvelous. See, I'm interpreting my tongue. You see that? I'm interpreting what I'm speaking to God, mysteries in the spirit. Somebody needed to hear that today. I don't know why the Lord had me uh, release that today. So God bless you, uh, Prophet Kenneth, uh, Kenneth Bates. Everybody, or, uh, I seen Kenneth Bates. Uh, Kenneth Bates on here. Kalisha False. God bless you. God bless everybody coming on. Latoya. Uh, God bless you. Kenneth Bent. I'm sorry. Uh, Carice Howell. Uh, Glory. Glory Dave. Glory, Lata. We got a lot of glory on this line. Look at even people's names are glory. Come on, somebody. You know what? God told me to pray to 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 um to play that song, glory in His presence. Hallelujah to glory in His presence. Uh, uh, and then the devil tried to break the line up. But we thank you, God. Right now, Latoya. God bless you. Hallelujah. Uh, uh Shana Snyder. God bless you. Uh, Shannon Little. Tanya Miller. My one of my prophetess daughters, Tanya Miller. Uh, Kalisha, uh, hallelujah, um, Carice, God bless you, Kenneth Bent, Sharon Little, Glory Glotta, we thank you, Lord, for this word, I just pray right now, Lord, I bind up, uh, every distraction on this line, we take authority right now over the enemy, over the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that worketh now in the sons and daughters of disobedience, so know that Satan is the prince of the power of the air, Come on, somebody. Ephesians 2 and 2 says that this is the spirit that now worketh in the sons and daughters of disobedience. And so a lot of times when you see a lot of disobedience, you see Satan um, and the prince of the power of the air coming. So notice that he tries to mess up the airways. Notice it's always during a Facebook Live or something that you're trying to do for God on media. That is why media ministry is one of the hardest ministries is because Satan, the prince of the power of the air, and notice he works worketh in the airways, meaning, meaning he, uh, Paul said we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against angels and principalities and powers and rulers of darkness of this age and spiritual wickedness where? In high places, in high places. So there's, there's a puppeteer, uh, Satan's putting, uh, puppet strings down uh, uh, principalities in your region on this line right now he's trying to distract people but we bind that uh, spirit right now of the prince of the power of the air right now I command my angel to go cut the line of the second cord right now break that power of the prince of the power of the air Satan on this line so we can have a good Facebook live today I thank you Lord I just pray Lord uh, like I said it's the third day that we are doing this and so God said the third day is a very powerful day Come on, Jesus rose again from the first, from dead. That was why God spake about this death and this fear of death. People on here have fear of death. Even with the COVID-19, uh, all this stuff, race wars going on in the street, um, you know what, you don't want to uh, admit it, but you have a fear of death. Come on, come on. Somebody, and God is saying, uh, uh, Hebrews 2.15, that I have delivered them who were all their lives uh, had the fear of death, right? And that were subject to bondage. And so I've broken you from the bondage of corruption. That, that sin and death nature. Um, and so that fear of death has been broken. Jesus said, I've suffered the pains of death. That I've taken death for every man. I've taken death for every man. But here's the problem is everybody doesn't accept it. It's a free gift of salvation. That's why it's so hard for people to receive salvation. Because they're like, wait a minute. What do I have to do? What you have to do is give up your life to save it. But that's really easy when you consider that you can spend eternity in a hell fire. Or you can spend eternity in paradise. Uh, make it. It's a, it's a really easy choice. Uh, um, and, and it's a free gift of salvation. It is not of works, lest any man should boast. Ephesians 2 and 8 says that it is by grace we are saved through faith. It is not of, 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 not of us. It's not 
that we should boast, okay? So it's not something that we have done. It's not our righteousness. It is the gift of righteousness. So God gives you a gift of righteousness that it is his righteousness. He gives you the faith of Christ. And so when he talks about Galatians 2.20, it is no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. The life that I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. So I live by the faith of Jesus. I, if I don't have my own faith, I tap into the faith of Christ. I, I, I tap in, I, but I have to crucify my flesh first and the desires of the flesh. So, Father, I just thank you right now. I praise you that these words that are spoken, there's a reason why the Lord is setting this up this way. A lot of times I just come straight out and prophesy, but there's a reason God wants people to be loosed from this pain of death or this scare of fear of death. Uh, somebody's fearful of death uh, um, because... You know, a lot of stuff is happening out there in the world. Even this election coming up in, a, in, a, in what, six or eight days, the Lord told me that this is going to be a war of Mount Carmel. It's just like Elijah and the uh, 450 prophets of Baal, the 400 prophets of Ashtaroth. Elijah called down fire from heaven to destroy the prophets of Baal. Uh, the prophets of Baal mean to be destroyed, and the principles of the kingdom of heaven need to come back in the earth. And so we have to come against the witchcraft and the, and the government, uh, all the government corruption. Uh, let Jesus reign again. The testimony of Jesus Christ, the spirit of prophecy coming back into the earth. I prophesied that that spirit of prophecy was falling on the prophets and the apostles. A fresh outpouring was coming, especially as we transition, the Lord said, into this election uh, year right now. Uh, this is the most important election that has ever been. So the Lord says you need to get out and vote. Uh, don't let the enemy win. Go out and vote. Get out there and vote. Here in Florida, we have um, we have early voting in Florida. And so I'm going to vote. You know what I mean? I'm going to vote early um, because I'm not going to wait till November 3rd to try to put my ballot in. Come on, y'all. If you have early voting, I don't know where the Holy Ghost is going, but I'm just going with them. If you have early voting in your state, go and vote, says the Spirit of God, uh, and cast your vote. So, yes, Lord. So let's just keep going. Dorsey, God bless you, woman of God. Latoya Gladden, God bless you. Marty Davis, I'm glad to see, I'm glad to see you're on here. Kalisha, hallelujah. Uh, Shana, hallelujah. So let's just get going. Uh, Brother uh, Prophet Kenneth Bent, I've been wanting to, um, really wanting to speak over you. God bless you, Prophetess Diana. Um, so the Lord is saying unto you, Prophet, um, Get ready because God I'm God said I'm sending you some people. I've already prophesied I believe some helpers are coming, but this is something very different. It's like you're you're like a have a, a, a an anointing of like King David on your life and and it's very strange because I want you uh prophet to read 1 Samuel chapter 16. What happened when when God called Samuel to anoint David as king, right? Notice he was out in the field tending sheep. And notice even Samuel, who was an experienced prophet, God said, I've rejected Saul. Okay, and an evil spirit from the Lord came to torment Saul, right? And so that he chose a new king. So I see the Lord saying, prophet, that he has rejected somebody around you um, and that you're going to literally come and take their office or their place. Uh, God is, uh, he raises up some and pulls down others. Hallelujah. God said, uh, Psalm 75, promotion doesn't come from the north, south, east, and west, but promotion comes from the Lord. He, he's raising He's raising you up and putting you in a place where somebody uh, was rejected by God. My God. Thank you, Holy Ghost. And so I want you to read 1 Samuel 16. It says, um, let's go there real quick. Because when I like to prophesy, a lot of times I like to use the, the uh, scriptures. So that you get a deeper understanding of what God is saying to you, prophet. And I, and I like to, to prophesy deep. I want you to look at 1 Samuel 16. God told Samuel... 1 Samuel 16, 1, And the Lord said unto Samuel, How long will you mourn for Saul? He said, Seeing I have rejected him from reigning over Israel, uh, um, take your horn of oil. So this is what the Lord is telling me. Take your horn of oil and go, hallelujah, I will send thee to Jesse the Bethlehemite, uh, for I have provided me a king among his sons. Okay, so the Lord is telling me to take the oil, hallelujah, 
to take the oil and pour it upon you, man of God. Pour it upon you right now because the Lord said, I'm anointing you right now into the prophetic office, which I don't know if you've already been there, but the Lord said, I'm actually putting you in the office of the prophet. And so right now, because I see that you were kind of operating as a prophet, but no one had confirmed your ministry. But right now, I anoint you in the name of Yeshua, Jesus Christ of Nazareth. And here's what happened uh, when Samuel, who was an experienced prophet, he went to uh, Jesse's house and he thought so sometimes this is what the Lord's saying sometimes it's going to take you a while prophet to get used to hearing from the voice of God because even Samuel uh, first thought it was Elihu uh, the oldest brother because he was the tallest okay he was more like he was bigger and he was looked like well he's got to be the one he's anointed king but God doesn't look on the outward appearance and so I want you to look at this and pay attention first Samuel uh, 16 7 the Lord said unto Samuel look not on his countenance or on the height of his stature because I have rejected him for the Lord seeth not as man seeth for man looketh on the outward appearance but the Lord looks on the heart Okay, so the Lord is saying, um, there's going to be people that I'm sending you, don't look at their outward appearance. When I begin to speak in your ears, don't even be like Samuel, where he started to go to the oldest son, to the next son, to the next son, to the next son, and he was like, well... Uh, it's got to be this son. And then he went, well, Lord, is it this one? And the Lord said, that's not him. And then he went to the next one. Is that's not him? And then he went all through the, all his sons. And finally, he gets down to verse 11. And Samuel said, Jesse, uh, are here are there any other children? He asked him, well, do you have any other children? And he said, uh, there uh, remaineth yet one. Hallelujah. The youngest. And behold, he keepeth the sheep. And Samuel said unto Jesse, Hallelujah. Send me and fetch him. Uh, we will not sit down until he come hither. And so here's what David was out tending the sheep. And the Lord said, it's because you've been tending to my sheep that I'm going to promote you, said the Spirit of God, to you, man of God. The Lord is promoting you because you've been out tending the sheep like a King David, that you were more like a pastor also. I see a pastorate pastor uh soil anointing on you a pastorate and so the lord is saying that i've uh, seen you out there and i've seen you taking care of sheep i've seen you ministering to people uh and i've watched you and the lord said that i that i've seen that how you look on my people and how you um you take care of the sheep and so the lord said this is why i'm anointing you for this and it says even describes david uh verse 12 he said that he brought him in and he was ruddy and he was with all of a beautiful countenance and a goodly looking. And the Lord said, Arise, anoint him, for this is him, right? And so David, notice right here too, First Samuel verse 16, 18, the Lord is saying this to you also, prophet Bent. He said, Then answered one of the servants and said, Behold, I have seen a son of Jesse, the Bethlehemite, that is coming. Uh, he is cunning and plain, and he is a mighty, valiant, man hallelujah and a man of war and he is prudent in matters and he is a of a calmly uh person and the lord is with them so the lord is saying mark that scripture down first samuel 16 and 18 the lord said that you're a mighty valiant man of war you have a good countenance the lord said uh, and that you're good in different matters of counsel and you're calmly uh, a calmly person meaning you have a very calm and quiet spirit you're very humble before the lord and the lord said he is with you the lord is saying i'm with you uh you're like a david i prophesy a david anointing upon you man of god and i thank you lord right now as you anoint this man of god this prophet of god as he goes forth in his ministry i impart to him the gifts of the spirit right now the anointing and the mantle of a prophet right now uh and everything that comes with the prophet right now in the name of jesus and i thank you for commissioning him into the office right now lord in jesus name thank you lord hallelujah prophetess tanya god bless you god bless you Lato uh latoya god bless you god bless you latoya thank you god for latoya thank you for latoya lord I just see the word evangelist over the top of you. And the Lord is saying you're a great uh, uh, evangelist. And the Lord said that there are many people that are going to come to you um, to, to learn about God. And he's saying 
that you will preach to them the gospel. And the Lord said, I want you to begin to preach the gospel again to the people around you. There's somebody around you who fights you all the time that you seem to try to witness to people. And I, like I said, the testimony of the witness, Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. So the Lord said, if you cannot preach to them straight out, I'm going to loose the spirit of prophecy upon you, which is the testimony of Jesus Christ. And you will begin to prophesy, says the spirit of God. I will open your mouth and begin to prophesy through your mouth. And so the Lord is saying, Latoya, to open your mouth and God is going to fill it. Uh, don't even worry about what the people are saying uh, about you. God said, begin to open your mouth. I'm going to fill it and prophesy. And you're going to be very surprised because words of knowledge are coming out. Words of wisdom. Uh, great levels of prophetic uh, anointing is upon your life. The Lord is saying right now that you are going to speak uh, mysteries also in the spirit. The Lord said, as you begin to pray in tongues more and more, uh, you're going to build up your most holy faith. Jude one twenty, praying in the Holy Ghost. He said, begin to pray more in the Holy Ghost because my spirit is going to make intercession for you with groanings and that cannot be uttered. Hallelujah. Uh, uh, Romans 8, 24 to 26, the Lord said that I will begin to groan for you. It won't be like you have to travail so hard anymore. It seems like you keep trying to burst something, but it's been very difficult. But the Lord said, I'm going to make intercession as you pray in the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost will begin to pray and connect to me, says the Lord, and you will begin to speak mysteries in the Spirit. The Lord is saying, I want you to read 1 Corinthians chapter 2. The Lord is saying that there are people around you that can't understand what you're saying because their natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit because they are spiritually discerned. Uh, but those who speak in God speaks mysteries, right? Uh, and it says there that you will continue to speak greater mysteries. And the Lord is saying, surely the Lord God will do nothing lest he reveal the secret unto you, the prophetess. And so I even see a prophetic anointing. The Lord is saying, I'm speaking to you mysteries. And the Lord is saying, not everything is for right now. I want you to write many things down. Write the vision down. Make it plain on tablets. Uh, and so that they that read it will run. That means that you can get ready to run with the vision. You can get ready to run with the vision. That means as the vision comes, uh, uh, wait for it. Because it surely will not tarry. It will come to pass. It means that it may tarry. But get ready. Because you're going to have to run with the vision. Okay. So you may have to run. I see your ministry is going to be a powerful ministry. And the Lord said, I'm giving you the vision for the ministry. in this next month I prophesy. And the next 30 days, you're going to write down the vision. Even as God gave the pattern to David uh, for the temple for his son Solomon, the Lord said, I'm giving you a supernatural pattern to your ministry. It's not going to be hard to see the pattern, the Lord said. Uh, and I, I wish I could get the scripture out if I could remember it. Uh, I, I believe it's 1 Samuel chapter 28 or 2 Samuel 28. Let me see and make sure I got it. Because uh, I want you to read this and understand how God speaks in a pattern. Uh, 1 Samuel 28, I believe. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Yeah, 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 yeah. This is still for Latoya. Uh, or it is one of the, I, I got to look it up, but it is uh, 1 Chronicles 28. Yeah, 28. 1 Chronicles 28, I believe. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Or 2 Chronicles 28. My God, help me out, Holy Ghost. Jesus. Okay, yeah. 1 Chronicles chapter 28. Here is what uh, God did for David to write the plans for the pattern for the temple. So it's not necessarily that you're going to build everything. The Lord is saying uh, you may be writing down a vision or speaking on a, in a, on a pattern to other people, to their vision. So the Lord said, I'm giving you a pattern to prophesy to other people also. So look at this. 1 Chronicles 28. Uh, and a uh, twelve, and the pattern of all that uh, he had by the spirit. So notice he gives you the pattern by the spirit of the courts of the house of the Lord and all the chambers round about. Hallelujah! And the treasuries of the house of God and of the treasuries of the dedicated things. He's given you all these plans, and so it, it, 
He was building a temple, which could be a church now. So the Lord is saying you could be building a church also. God is going to give you plans for a church, I prophesy. And he's also going to give you the plans for other people to build churches. Like your, you have administration skills. I see the Lord saying it is as 1 Corinthians 12, 28. There are first apostles, secondary prophets, thirdly teachers, then miracles, then um, helps and our healings, and then helps and governments, and then diverse kinds of tongues. The Lord said, I've given you administration helps and governments. Uh, the Lord is saying you're going to be able to help churches build uh, and government them. You're going to help them learn how uh, to govern to, to govern the church. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord, for that word of knowledge. Um, and so the Lord is saying, take heed, verse uh, First Chronicles chapter 28 and 10. Take heed now for the Lord has um, chosen thee to build the house and the sanctuary. And he said, be strong and do it. My God. Uh, and then David gave to Solomon, listen to this, his son, the pattern of the porch and of the houses thereof. Hallelujah. And of the treasuries and of the upper chambers thereof and of the inner parlors thereof and of the place of the mercy seat my god and that is the place where jesus comes on the mercy seat and it was where the cherubims overshadow and the glory of the mercy seat so this is literally where he's going to give you the pattern of worship how G to bring jesus in uh to the room to worship and bring him into the room i see you even um training on worship and teaching people to worship the lord in spirit and in truth once again and that jesus will come down between the cherubim and sit on the mercy seat i prophesy in jesus name that jesus is coming uh, to sit on the mercy seat and that is literally the mercy seat also of your heart the lord said jesus is coming to be not only the savior of your life latoya but he's going to be the lord of your life let jesus sit back on the pattern or the the seat of your heart and he's going to show you a supernatural pattern i prophesy in the name of jesus yeah, you be strong. Hallelujah. Evangelist Stevenson, God bless you. Pastor uh, uh, Ruko, God bless you. Good to see you on here again. Latoya, God bless you. Uh, Kamuli, God bless you. Good to see you again. Uh, Kalusha, God bless you. Uh, we're just going to keep on flowing in the Holy Ghost. I see uh, Prophetess Tamisha. Uh, I'm glad you're on here today. Sister Marty Davis, Glory Lata. Let's keep on moving and get so I'm going to get a few people that I didn't get yesterday. And then I, I, I'll keep praying and prophesying as the Lord moves me uh, today. Um, and so Isabel, God bless you. Uh, Tamisha, God bless you. Glory Lata. Right now, I thank you. And Glory Dave. Look at these two Glory... Uh, the Lord is saying both of you, Glory Lata and Glory Dave, are glory carriers. That's why I gave you that name. You're a glory carrier. Hallelujah. Glory Lata. The Lord is saying you are my glory carrier. And the Lord is saying I have anointed you to teach on my glory, says the Spirit of God. I want you to teach my glory is my doxa kavad, the weight. Okay, so there's two uh, words for glory. Uh, one is doxa, which means uh, God's reputation, his splendor, his majesty. Uh, one is kabod or kabod, which means God's weight. Okay, so kabod is the only glory that is ascribed to God only. But Shekinah glory, hallelujah, Shekinah glory is what God gives to his people. And so it's what overshadows God's people. And so I prophesy that the kabod, the weight of God's glory will fall and his reputation will fall and you will move in the Shekinah glory. The Lord is saying, I, I will let the glory of the Shekinah fall on you. And the Lord said there's going to be a highway of Shekinah glory uh, in your uh, ministry. I see it's like Isaiah chapter 11 talks about a highway way of glory hallelujah that no unclean thing could come up on this highway and the lord is saying that you've made a highway of glory in your church uh that there's a highway of glory coming in to your church it's god's glory and it's the glory that he's putting on to rest upon his people i prophesy and that is the sevenfold spirit of god falling the spirit of wisdom the spirit of understanding the spirit of might the spirit of counsel the spirit of knowledge the spirit of the fear of the lord and so the lord said as that glory falls that you will begin to move powerfully in the spirit of might. I prophesy the spirit of counsel and the spirit of might. It is the spirit of counsel the instructions what to do next it is the spirit of counsel that tells you what to do next and it is the spirit of might that will fall upon you supernaturally to give you supernatural physical strength okay so the lord is saying 
glory that you you felt like you were losing some strength and the lord said that's because the enemy was attacking uh, your mind and your stomach and i see that there was a spirit of python that was wrapping itself around you trying to choke you and the lord said that is the spirit of python and i'm going to break that spirit right now in the name of jesus um what is the spirit of python we we always talk about Acts 16 16 the woman with the um the, the, the divination spirit, the spirit of Python, that's part of it. But I want to tell you more about the spirit of Python. Uh, the spirit of Python was actually, you're going to see that even more in First uh, Samuel chapter 28, uh, the witch of Endor. Come on, Malkadabas. Uh, when Saul went to the witch of Endor, and it said that Saul um, uh, had told everybody to put the wizards and the witches and the necromancers out of the out of uh, Israel, and even Saul went against his own uh, counsel, and he wanted uh, God stopped speaking to him. So why did Saul go to the witch in, in door? Because God it said God is not speaking through me through dreams, through Urim, through prophets. Okay, so God stopped. You know, back then they spoke with the Urim and the Thummim, meaning it is a breastplate that they put on of judgment, and it would tell them, go this way or that way. And there were 12 stones, and each one was 12 tribes of Israel, and one of those stones would light up to tell them where to go. And so, this is still for you, Glory. Uh, and so that is a breastplate of judgment was what it was called. So it was justice and judgment. And God said, you have a breastplate of judgment on you. You're like a high priest in the kingdom, meaning you can make judgment or counsel of matters. But what happened with Saul was the witch of Endor was uh, one who had a familiar spirit. And so I see the Lord showing me that there has been people who had familiar spirits around you. They were necromancers, meaning they raised the dead. Meaning they called up Samuel from the dead. And that was Samuel who came from the dead because he said, why have you raised me from my sleep? And so I see there are people that have been practicing necromancy around you. Uh, and the Lord is saying, I'm going to break that python familiar spirit. And so we see right now the Lord is saying right now, because Halloween is coming up on the 31st, that um, it is a necromancy familiar spirit that they worship the dead on Halloween. And so the, there's a certain kind of evil that comes on Halloween. And the Lord is saying that it is a familiar spirit and a python spirit that comes uh, at Halloween. And I've got some notes on it, but I'm going to preach a message on this another day. But the Lord is saying that there's been a lot of people that practice witchcraft, uh, that speak in diviners, diviners around you, glory. And right now, I'm going to break that power uh, of that witch. It's a witch of indoor. And I also see familiar spirits and the spirit of the necromancer, the spirit of the necromancer, one who raises the dead. Okay. Uh, wizards also. Uh, I see wizards and warlocks around you. So right now, I bind every wizard spirit, every necromancy spirit, every spirit of a familiar spirit right now I rebuke every spirit of python every spirit of divination around you I break it right now as a prophet of God I call the fire of the Holy Ghost right now I call the spirit of burning and judgment Isaiah 4 4 to break up every spirit of the necromancer every uh, spirit of uh, of a familiar spirit. It's just a familiar spirit that torments you. It's something that was in your family line also. A familiar spirit means one that is in a family also. And so it's something in your family that torments you and it's like a generational curse. But I prophesy God is breaking that familiar spirit. Right now I bind that python spirit. I command the pythos to come out of her out of her soul. Leave in the name of Yeshua. Leave in the name of Jesus. We rebuke you Satan. Get thee under your feet right now. In Jesus' name, we bind the necromancy spirit, the spirit of familiar spirit. I bind every wit witch and warlock and wizard around you. I take authority over them right now. I call the fire of the Holy Ghost right now, the spirit of burning and judgment to judge every spirit right now. In Jesus' name, I call the refiner's fire of the fuller soul, Malachi 3, 2, to cleanse out any residue in your body that those unclean, vexing, tormenting spirits had left in your soul right now. We take authority over... Um, um, every unclean, vexing, tormenting spirit. You're going to get supernatural deliverance right now, woman of God. Begin to raise your hands right now. Those spirits are coming out where they came in. Leave right now. I command you in Jesus' name. She's a temple of the Holy Ghost. You cannot dwell in her anymore. Hallelujah. 1 Corinthians 6, 17-19. She's been joined to the Lord Jesus. She's become one spirit with Him right now. Leave. I command you to leave. And we have a name above every name. 
at the name of Jesus, every knee is going to bow, every tongue shall confess, to the glory of God the Father, where? In the heavens, the earth, and under the earth. So notice that the dead are raised from under the earth. Come on, somebody. But Jesus went to the lower parts of the earth to loose us from the pains of death. So I prophesy God is loosing you uh, glory from the pains of death. You've had a fear of death all your life. The Lord said, I'm breaking the fear of death over you right now. I bind the spirit of death, the spirit of sin and death. The Lord said to repent right now, woman of God, with me. Uh, it was somebody in your family also who was practicing necromancy. It was somebody in your family who was using a familiar spirit. But the Lord said, if you repent right now, you'll repent for the whole bloodline. And that God said, he's going to break off every curse, every generational curse right now. I want you to read Deuteronomy chapter 28. The Lord said that there's been, you had been cursed in the field, curse coming in, curse going out, um, that the inflammation and the itch and the botch and the consumption would come and consume you. So a lot of your infirmities, the Lord said, that you've suffered is from a curse. Uh, like a curse. And so we break the curse right now. Uh, uh, Galatians 3.13, that the Lord Jesus Christ uh, not only uh, took authority over this, or, or, or came over the law of sin and death, but he, uh, he broke the curse uh, of the law. So I prophesy Jesus is breaking the curse right now. And the Lord said, I'm going to command my blessing upon you. Deuteronomy 28, Glory Lata. The Lord said, I'm commanding my blessing. You'll be blessed in the field, blessed coming out, uh, blessed in the city. The Lord said, you'll be above only and not beneath. Hallelujah. The head and not the tail. And the Lord said, I'm going to command a blessing on your storehouses also. I prophesy, I break the poverty spirit, the spirit of poverty all around you. I bind the spirit of lack and poverty poverty in the name of Jesus. The Lord said, I'm pouring the blessing on you. I'm commanding the blessing on your storehouses, meaning your bank account. I'm I'm, I'm commanding the blessing. And the Lord said, you will lend and not borrow. Hallelujah. You will lend and not borrow. The Lord says, you will not have to borrow money anymore because I break that spirit right now of the curse right now off your finances. You will no more borrow money. The Lord said, the spirit of the creditor is broken off, but you will lend to many nations. I prophesy because the Lord is commanding the blessing upon you. He's com commanding the blessing in the city, in the field. Everywhere, your harvest is coming in. I prophesy, glory. Your harvest is coming in. And we thank you, God, that the angel of the Lord has come forth to break any kundalini spirit, any spirit of false worship, the spirit of Ashtaroth, uh, the spirit of Baal. Uh, the Baal spirit is a spirit of secular humanism or materialism. And so a Baal principality, B-A-L-L, -L, can be over the region. I, I, I forget where you live, but there's some Baal spirit over you. Like it looks like in your church, like they seem to worship a lot of... Um, um, secular humanism and materialism and, and it also the traditions of men and the Lord Jesus said the traditions of men make the word of God of none effect and so a lot of times you're trying to minister to people and they're not hearing you even the people in your congregation your church or around you it's because they have a Baal spirit B-A-L and they have a tradition of men's spirit the Lord said and it's because they, they're so traditional my God that, that, that it makes the word of none effect and that's always trying to keep their traditions and the Lord said you, you you can't keep your traditions because God is constantly moving God isn't staying the same he is the same yesterday today and forevermore uh his his uh character is the same but he's constantly moving the Holy Ghost is moving so I break off that tradition of men uh, around you, and I prophesy God is moving by the Holy Ghost through you. Right now, the power of the Holy Ghost has fallen upon you, the spirit of fire. Hallelujah. I declare you're going to be baptized afresh with the Holy Ghost and fire right now. Matthew 3 and 11. Let the Holy Ghost and fire rebaptize you, and you're going to speak in uh, greater tongues. The Lord said, not only in the tongues of angels, but in the tongues of men. Hallelujah. That you will begin to speak in other languages when you go into other countries. You will be speaking in Chinese and Mandarin, the Lord said. You will be speaking in Russian. Hallelujah. And different African dialects. 
I don't know why, but the Lord said that I'm going to give you different African dialects uh, uh, and that for some missionary journey you're taking. And the Lord said that you will speak in unknown tongues that they will understand what you're saying and, and they will speak and you will understand what they're saying supernaturally. So I prophesy supernatural tongues, uh, languages of men and of angels. I prophesy supernatural angelic languages, mysteries in the spirit to you, glory, right now in Jesus' name. Name. Hallelujah. If he, God bless you. Glory, Dave. Hallelujah. Let's keep on moving with the glory carriers already. Glory, 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 glory. Let me look at uh, your profile real quick. Hallelujah. So thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We just continue to pray uh, over glory, Dave. We just thank you for this, this mighty warrior of God. I thank you that God is moving even amongst your, uh, uh, amongst your congregation, those that you fellowship with, and you're coming out of, of a time of where you've kind of been feeling isolated. Um, even though you're around people, you feel isolated because you have a different kind of mantle, a different kind of calling, but you have a very much compassion for people. God said, I'm going to use that compassion, glory, Glory, Dave. I'm going to use that compassion um, to heal people. It is some way you talk to people. It's like you have a supernatural uh, spirit of counsel to be able to talk to people. And the Lord said that I'm going to use the spirit of counsel and I'm going to begin to show you how to counsel people. Uh, I see you doing a prayer line, counseling people over the phone, uh, maybe do it a conference line. Also, don't be afraid to get um, a free conference call line uh, and literally just start praying for people or a prayer line uh, because the Lord said I'm anointing you with supernatural gifts today to begin uh, to minister to people I prophesy to you glory Dave in the name of Jesus thank you Lord if he um, uh, coma hallelujah if he if he if he we thank you for if he right now I just thank you for if he right now wow 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 thank you Jesus right now uh, love, joy, and peace, and comfort. The Lord is saying, I'm comforting with you with my love. I want you, uh, if he to read Zephaniah, uh, the Lord's given me a scripture for you. Hallelujah. Zephaniah chapter 3. Hallelujah. Verse 17, 18, 19, and 20. The Lord said, Zephaniah 3, 17, 18, 19, 20. This will be a prophecy for you. So you don't even have to write it down. It's in your Bible. Hallelujah. So he's taking the Logos and making a rhema. Hallelujah. So he says, the Lord thy God... This is for you, Iffy. The Lord thy God is in the midst of you. He is mighty. He will save you. Hallelujah. He will rejoice over you with joy. Hallelujah. He will rest in his love for you, and he will joy over you with singing, says the Lord. Hallelujah. I will gather you, says the Lord, that are sorrowful. Everywhere you've been sorrowful, God is about to heal you in your emotions today, I prophesy. Uh, for the solemn assembly, who are thee? Uh, to whom the reproach is a burden. So the Lord is saying, I'm releasing every burden, every sorrow. And look at this, uh, Zephaniah 3, 19. Behold, at that time, the Lord said, I will undo all those who afflict thee. So God is going to undo all that afflict you, the Lord said. Uh, and I will save her. Notice it's a her. I will save her that halt this and gather her that was driven out, and I will get them praise and fame. God said, I'm not only going to give you praise, but I'm going to give you fame. God said, I'm giving you fame. Hallelujah. I'm going to give you praise and fame for everything that you've gone through in every land, hallelujah, that where, hallelujah, they have been put to shame. So God said, everywhere you've been put to shame, every city, every country, everywhere, every church you've been into, that the Lord said that you've been put to shame, I'm going to give you praise and fame among those people. Thus says the Spirit of God, every land and every place, and I will show you, says the Lord in verse 20, at that time, I will bring you again. Even in this time, I will gather you, for I will make you a name and a praise. Listen to this. Among all people of the earth, hallelujah, when the Lord shall turn back your captivity before their very eyes. So God's going to literally make you a praise and a name in the earth. Your name is going to be famous. I prophesy that the Lord is going to turn back your captivity in front of everybody. He said, I'm going to turn it back in front of everybody. Everybody that puts you to shame, the God is saying that I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to lift you up to honor in front of everybody. He says the Spirit of God. Hallelujah. 
And I will gather you also and all the people that are around you. All those people that you've been praying for, God's going to save them. And he's going to rejoice over them. He's going to sing over them. He's going to praise over them. And the Lord said, I am, am your uh, I am your shield and exceeding great reward, said the Lord. Just as the Lord said to Abraham, I am your shield and your exceeding great reward. So the Lord said, I am your reward. Hallelujah. I am the reward in this season, says the Spirit of God. To you, woman of God, iffy. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Uh, hallelujah. I see some people. Darius Townsend. God bless you. Martha. Uh, Venegas. I see you there. People, why are you live? It messes up. Uh, uh, okay, so we go. Martha, right now, in Jesus' name, I've just been wanting to pray over you, Martha and Marty, both, because I've been missing you all. Uh, and, and also Darius Townsend, but I'll get to you guys in a minute. So, Martha Venegas, the Lord is saying unto you, woman of God, I know it's been hard, daughter. I know you've struggled, but the Lord said, now I'm opening up financial prosperity. The Lord said, it might look dim in, the, in one job, but every time one door closes, I'm opening another one. The Lord said, I'm opening opening more prosperity and greater uh, skills to do greater work. The Lord said, that you can do many skills. The Lord said, to begin to tap into the skills that I've given you, and I'm going to show you places to, to make greater levels of income. The Lord said, I know that the job can sometimes seem heavy, but God God's wanting to continue uh, you to stay there until he moves you. And every time he sends you into a place that you're going to get more experience with people. And the Lord said, that is because I'm, I'm going to let have you to, to rule. I'm going to have you to own your own business. The Lord said, I'm teaching you to be a business person. I'm teaching you how to work with different kind of people. And I'm showing you different kind of um, business strategies. So the Lord said, I'm giving you a business strategy. I'm giving you a plan to make money in this COVID-19. When everybody else is going to be closed. When every, all these other businesses are closing down. I will prosper you, says the Spirit of the Lord. Martha, hallelujah. And God was going to um, also just show you that this season is the season where he's going to bring your harvest in that the harvest that you've waited for the Lord said you've sown many seeds and the Lord said you have sown bountifully and now you will reap bountifully I prophesy that your harvest is coming in get ready because through um uh, through November and December there's going to be an influx of finances coming to you and, and a lot of times it might be just somebody that is giving money to you and so the Lord said open open up your uh, heart to receive and the Lord said that I'm going to show you also how to make more money uh, and I don't know why he's talking about this I don't talk a whole lot about money but it's something to do with that so I bind and I break off the spirit of lack of poverty. I take authority over the spirit of mammon uh, that has been in your wallet, on your finances. I bind the canker worm, the caterpillar, the pommel worm, the locusts that have eaten up your harvest. And I decree that your harvest is coming in. We break even the demon spirit of the creditor that even keeps you bound to a credit type system of the world. And I, I declare financial prosperity but financial independence. I hear the word independent. The Lord says you will be financially independent and this next year, in 2021, get ready. The Lord said, Martha, I prophesy you'll be financially independent. And I want you to message me when this prophecy comes to pass and give God the glory. Hallelujah. Thank you, uh, Lord, for Marty Davis. We thank you uh, for see your prophetess, Marty Davis. Uh, uh, and I just pray right now, I bind up any any spirit that keeps you feeling like you're, you're just... Um, uh, uh, wanting to make the next step, but you can't make it. And so right now, I take authority right now over a spirit of delay in your life. Right now, I declare that God's sending a supernatural power of Zoat Pueo. He's going to power you, woman of God, so fast. The Lord is saying it's a quickening of my Holy Ghost is going to happen. I prophesy. And so there's like, there's a word in the Greek that means... Uh, quickening. It's G2227 Zoat Pueo. It is to produce alive. It is to bear living young. And it is to cause to live, to make alive, to give life. It is to be by spiritual power to arouse and to invigorate. So the Lord said, I'm going to arouse you. I'm going to invigorate you. I'm going to quicken you um, to restore you to life. The Lord is saying, I'm restoring you to give increase of life. Hallelujah. Thus physical and of spiritual life. Quickening as in respects to the spirit. Endued with new and greater powers of life. So God's saying it's like a seed that is germinating and that it's growing. And the Lord said your faith has grown a lot in this last year. 
Marty Davis, the Lord is saying because of all the trials that your faith has grown so much that you don't even realize how much faith you have. If you would only tap into this power of God, the Zoapueo quickening of the Holy Ghost, the Lord said I, I, that you would find the power that is in you. The Lord said you have the gift of faith. I prophesy there's not as, there, you have many supernatural gifts, but the Lord said you have the gift of supernatural faith that pushes all the other nine gifts. Meaning when you tap into the realm of supernatural faith, it said that you will literally prophesy for hours. I see you prophesying among the prophets in a congregation that you're in. The Lord said to stand up and I'll put my words in your mouth. Begin to prophesy in that congregation. The Lord said, uh, because I have given you many instructions, but you haven't spoken them. Uh, the Lord said that you had a spirit of fear a little bit. So I bind the spirit of fear right now. I rebuke that spirit of fear. I command faith right now. Uh, the law of faith, the gift of faith, and the supernatural faith. Yes, uh, get on. Okay. Uh, you've been able to get on. Okay, so we're just going to continue to pray. Right now, I just pray that faith will push you, uh, quickening of the Holy Ghost, and right now that that seed inside of you would germinate, meaning that, that it'll grow into where it's supposed to be. And the Lord's saying, this is a year, in 2021, and it won't be the same as last year, this year, because the Lord said it was this year that I had to really uh, press down on you. There was the crushing, and so you have to be crushed before the anointing oil can come out, and so the Lord said the anointing is flowing now i see that the olive was crushed hallelujah and the anointing of the holy spirit now is coming forth and the lord said all your trials i'm going to use it uh to bring people to my to my uh spirit and my kingdom and the lord is saying that now you will be able to teach people how to get through their trials it won't it'll be a spirit of counsel also like a spirit of wisdom also and knowledge and also i see a wow I see the fear of the Lord coming upon you right now. Like there's just a greater reverence for God coming. That is the spirit of the fear of the Lord. And quick quick understanding in the fear of the Lord. So the Lord said, uh, you're going to have a holy fear of God come on you right now. And that holy fear of God is going to give you a deeper understanding of the mysteries of God. The Lord said, I'm going to speak greater mysteries in the spirit. Even as you speak it in your new tongues, the Lord said, I see tongues of fire coming upon you. And even as I prayed in tongues and I interpreted it on this line, the Lord said, so you, you'll pray in tongues and you will interpret that tongue and you will interpret mysteries. And you will begin to prophesy more and more. The Lord said to stir up the gift that was in you. That has been given you by prophecy. By the laid out of the hands of the presbytery. So you have to begin to stir that thing up. Mar Marty. Uh, the Lord is saying to stir it up. I have a lot of uh, notes on stirring up the gift. But I, I don't want to miss out on it. Uh, 2 Timothy 1.6 Therefore I put you into remembrance that you stir up the gift that was in you, uh, that was given you by the laying on the hands. That word means to fan it into flame. You gotta fan that thing into flame. And he also says for me to tell you 1 first, first Timothy 4.14 he said to neglect not the gift that is in you, which has been given you by prophecy by the laying on of the hands of the presbytery. And so it really means katergozomai in the Greek means to perform, to accomplish, to achieve, to work it out, uh, to do that which something results of things that bring about a resolution. Listen to this. It is to fashion and render one fit for a thing. So the God said, I'm bringing you to a resolution. I'm bringing you to be fit for the office that I've called you to. So he will give you this power, G2716 in the Greek, katergozomai. It means just to give you power, to make you able to do something. And so God said, I'm not going to call you to the office that I'm not giving you the power to perform. Okay, so so... So, so just tap into the supernatural. God said that it won't be like you have to work it up. These signs are going to follow you, Marty, because you believe. The Lord said, uh, in my name, you'll cast out devils. In my name, you'll speak with new tongues. In my name, you will drink any deadly thing. It will not hurt you. You will pick up serpents. You'll trample on serpents and scorpions over all the power of the enemy. Nothing by any means will hurt you. And he says, Mark 16, 19 and 20, that you'll lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. 
Hallelujah. And it says, Mark 16, 20, that Jesus went with them as they went preaching everywhere. He went with them, confirming his own word with signs following. So the Lord said, signs are going to follow you. You don't have to try to work signs up. These signs will follow you because you believe. Hallelujah. In my name. Hallelujah. So we thank you for that prophecy uh, to prophetess Seer Mari Davis. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for everybody on this line. Apostle uh, uh, Doug, it looks like. Hallelujah. God bless you, man of God. Hallelujah. We just continue to Isabel. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you, Darius. Thank you, Lord. Uh, yeah, let's... Uh, it looks like Apostle Doob. I'm going to pray right now over you, man of God. The Lord wants me to pray right now. I pray over this Apostle of God. I, I break every stronghold coming up against your mind. Every uh, a fiery dart of the enemy. The Lord said there's been some fiery darts of the enemy that have shot and got through your shield of faith. And it kind of hits you. But I bind up every spirit, an unclean spirit that came into your mind. Every stronghold, I pull it down. I cast down every argument, every imagination, and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God and I pull into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. Right now, I just rebuke the strong man. Jesus said, lest you bind the strong man, you cannot spoil his good. And so right now, I bind the strong man of disassociation. I take authority over that strong man. Right now, uh, of, of discontent, I break the spirit of discontent. I even uh, break the stronghold of people coming against you and, and disrespect. I break the stronghold of disrespect that people aren't reverencing you like they should as an apostle of God. And so I break the spirit of disrespect coming against you right now, man of God. I prophesy uh, respect and reverence right now. A uh, spirit of the fear of the Lord is coming upon people. It'll be like you get into the presence of people and all of a sudden the fear of the Lord is going to fall on people and they will literally reverence you. I prophesy to you, apostle, people will begin to reverence you again. And this is because the enemy tried to play a trick on people and, and tried to uh, counsel against you. I see the counsel of a Hithophel, like a, a Hithophel, an Absalom type spirit around you where people were counseling against you, like a, a, even amongst your own sons. You know, Absalom was David's son that rose up against him to try to dethrone him. So right now I bind the Absalom spirit coming against you, the Hithophel. I spoil uh, the plans and the counsel of Hithophel. Anybody that is counseling against you, I bind the Korah spirit and the spirit of Jezebel. I rebuke the spirit of Jezebel, every spirit of seduction, every Delilah spirit uh, coming up against you right now. It's like a seductress, a woman that is seducing you, uh, but it's not like you're going for it, but it's still a spirit. And so we break that spirit because you have the spirit and power of Elijah upon you as an apostle or prophet. It means that Jezebel's spirit is still in the earth also. If the spirit and the power of Elijah is in the earth, so is the spirit of Jezebel. And and so uh, uh, sometimes that Jezebel spirit make you make you want to feel like you're you want to go into a cave or isolate or or and even die. You know this is that fear of death. And so I break the fear of death. I declare eternal life in Christ. Uh, and that you be born again, again. I just, a new revigoration uh, in your spirit right now. I take authority over the Korah spirit. A uh, Korah is the same uh, Cora is the same type of spirit, but it's in the man. Okay, so so Jezebel usually is in women, not always. It's not gender specific, but the Cora spirit is usually in men of God, and it, it's it's the counterpart of of Jezebel. And Cora was the one that came up against Moses. Uh, in Numbers chapter 16, he tried to come up against Moses uh, and he raised up the company of Korah. And so it, uh, a company of Korah uh, came to try to dismantle Moses' authority and say that he wasn't chosen of God. So I bind that Korah spirit up that is around you right now. Uh, and also, you know, Moses prophesied and said, if, 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 if God hasn't called me, then let there not be some new thing happen. But if God has called me, let there be a new thing happen. Let the earth open up and swallow Korah and all that belongs to them. So I prophesy the earth is going to open up and swallow the Korah spirit. It's going to swallow Korah, uh, apostle, and his company. Anybody that's coming against you, God said that I have chosen you and nobody can put their hands on you. I've called a wall of fire all around you and I am the glory and the mist to you, says the Spirit of God. Zechariah 2 and 5. And so I thank you, Lord. I, I just bless the apostles' ministry right now in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. 
Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, that you're breaking every every uh, core of spirit, every spirit coming up against him right now. In the name of Jesus, hallelujah. Darius Townsend, I thank you for the man of God. Darius, God bless you. Uh, we just thank you for Darius's ministry, just the strength of the prophetic and the apostolic. The Lord said that you're going to start moving heavy in the word of knowledge, man of God. Get ready because I'm going to be giving you names and numbers. Uh, and the Lord said I'm taking you back forensically um, and to show you people's uh, genealogy, their past. I prophesy genealogy type prophecy. Uh, the Lord is going to start to show you really deeper things in the word of knowledge. Um, and God said, don't always speak everything that I tell you. I might give you a word of knowledge why I've given you a prophecy. And the Lord said, I only want you to speak the word of knowledge that I tell you to. If I give you someone's name or their birth date, he said, most, most of the time is because they're in unbelief. Uh, man of God. It means that I have to uh, work up their faith with the word of knowledge. And so it's not to glorify you, but it's to glorify God. And the Lord said that you will use the word of knowledge uh, uh, right, not like all these other prophets that are uh, that are using it to gain something because the gospel is free. But the Lord said you haven't had tried to to make money. Uh, you've not tried to take the prophet's package where you've been sold out to money or mammon. Uh, and so the Lord said, I'm going to give you greater word of knowledge and the word of wisdom. And you will begin to prophesy at a very high level, says the Spirit of God. I'm going to have you prophesy over kings, says the Lord, and presidents. Hallelujah. And men of great honor, uh, such as the other apostles and prophets uh, in other countries also. And you will prophesy many visions and ministries. And the Lord said, I'll also give you interpretation of visions, deep mysteries and visions and dreams, says the Lord. As the interpretation of dreams come forth, as you pray in an unknown tongue, the Lord said, I will also give you also the mysteries in the spirit, said the Lord. As you begin to build up your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost more, the Lord said, the spirit of God is going to make intercession for you according to the will of God. And so there will be groanings and new groanings. I prophesy the Lord wants you to get down on your faith, face, man of God, and begin to get down on your face once again. And the Lord said, as you reverence me and you fall before me, the testimony of Jesus Christ, which is the spirit of prophecy, Revelation 19 10, will start to prophesy through you. It is the spirit of prophecy. It is the testimony of Jesus that is the spirit of prophecy. And the Lord said the spirit of prophecy will rise Rise up, and I also gave you that other word that it says in the Bible, um, the BBB, uh, the Basic Bible Translation. I like this Revelation 19, uh, Revelation 19 and 10. It says that the witness of Jesus, give worship to God, for the witness of Jesus is the spirit of the prophet's word. Okay, so it is the witness of Jesus that is going to be the spirit of the prophet's word in you. And so the Lord said that testimony or the witness of Christ is rising up in you as the witness of Christ rises up in you, uh, Darius, so will you prophesy more and more and greater levels of, of forensic prophecy, I prophesy in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Uh, it'll very be very uh, quick also. And same with you, Apostle. Uh, uh, you're going to be prophesying heavy too because you already do, but, but a greater level of the prophetic. Uh, I release the mantle of the prophetic upon you, men of God, right now. Every gift that's on my life I impart. Romans 1.11, that I might impart some spiritual gift unto you to the end that you might be established. The mutual faith, both you and I. And so it's a mutual uh, a faith, and I'm going to impart my gifts right now, every, and working in miracles, every gift of prophecy, every gift of the word of knowledge, the word of wisdom, tongues, interpretation of tongues, and the gift of faith, also a strong mantle of the discerning of spirits, as I move heavier in the discerning of spirits, uh, the Lord said, you will also move heavy in the discerning of spirits, I prophesy, uh, Darius, hallelujah, God bless you, and apostle, uh, apostle, do, God bless you, Hallelujah. So we thank you right now. Dwayne Murphy, God bless you, man of God. I thank you for the men of God. Powerful, mighty warriors of men on this line. I like to see a lot of men of God. Uh, the Lord is raising up you, Dwayne, uh, to, to bring up men, young men of God, um, a company of young men. And so the Lord said, men of God are rising back up, and especially African-American men. Many African-American men are coming out of prisons, the Lord said. And Dwayne, I want you to bring many African-American men out of prison and train 
train them. And the Lord said, because I'm going to set the captives free in this next year, 2021, the Lord said that there's going to be a president in office who's going to set a lot of young men free from prison and a lot of minority men. And so the Lord said, when those men come out of prison, we need some mentors. And so the Lord said, and this is the prophecy of Isaiah. He said that all these men are shut in prisons. All and nobody says restore, but the Lord said to Wayne, you're going to say restore to these young men and you're going to restore these young men of God. I prophesy you will restore them and you'll train them up. And the Lord said, I'm going to even give you uh, work. I, I see like a, a labor force, some kind of labor force that you're going to help these men get jobs. And uh, there's going to be a labor force and it's going to be for the kingdom of of God, I prophesy, and God will release the supernatural finances for a, a kingdom of heaven labor force for men coming out of prison, I prophesy, in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Praise the living God. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Uh, K, God bless you. God bless you, K. So we thank you for K right now. The Lord said to continue to pray for K and her health. Uh, something going on in your health, woman of God. And so right now, I take authority over uh, every spirit of infirmity in your body. I rebuke the spirit of infirmity. Woman, thou art loose from thy infirmity. I break the power of an infirmity. Every vexing, unclean spirit that tries to torment you at nighttime in your dreams. Uh, it's like the enemy comes to plant tares at night when you sleep. It's like a spirit of insomnia or something, Kay. Uh, I bind the spirit of insomnia right now. I rebuke that spirit of insomnia. I declare that the Lord is going to give you rest. Any sickness in your body is going to come out. If you have to spit something out today, the Lord said some things are going to come out of your body. You might cough something up. You might spit something up. You might sneeze seven times. Uh, just like uh, when Elijah prayed for the dead boy, he sneezed seven times and the spirit of death came out of him. So I declare and prophesy that God is healing your body. I send the word right now, uh, according to Psalm 107 and 20, into your body. The Lord said he sent forth his word to heal us of all our diseases and deliver us from all destruction. Right now, I send the word of healing right now. The Luke, Luke 5, 17, the power of the Lord is present to heal. The Lord is saying the healing anointing is coming on this line right now. Now, if you need healing, reach out and grab it. The Lord has been healing a lot of people. I've got testimony, Sister Tamia. God bless you, woman of God. My daughter, uh, we got a, a testimony that we prayed. We both prayed for her daughter, all three of us, Tanya Miller, and she was healed last night. Uh, the devil was trying to attack her. So we're getting supernatural healing testimonies. So I prophesy, Lord uh, K, that you're getting healed right now, a miracle in your body. I prophesy a miracle right now in your body. Receive it. Lift your hands and begin to praise God. Uh, activate your faith. The Lord said that faith without works is dead. Matthew 7 and 7 says, Seek and you shall find. Knock and the door shall be open. So as you seek, Seek for the better. The Lord says you'll start to feel better. So don't seek for the devil. Resist the devil and he'll flee from you. Um, the Lord said to start seek for the healing. Seek for my healing touch. And so that dunamis power of healing is coming into your body. I break the power uh, right now of the spirit of confusion over your mind. I bind up every spirit of pain in your stomach area. I command that pain to come out of your stomach right now. Any kind of irritable bowel syndrome, I break it. Any kind of ulcer, diabetes, high blood pressure, I bind it right now in Jesus' name. We break the power of high blood pressure, uh, diabetes. I command uh, diabetes to loose your people right now in the name of Jesus right now. Thank you, Lord, for diabetes being broken. The Lord said, what Whatever we bind on earth shall be bound in eternity. Whatever we loose on the earth shall be loosed in heaven. And so as we bind these spirits, the Lord said all heaven is going to bind them. Hallelujah. As we loose healing on this line, all heaven is going to loose healing. So I loose the healing anointing. Woman, thou art loose from thy infirmity. Declare and decree and prophesy that you're loosed. Tell the devil that I'm loosed from my infirmity. Hallelujah. Even that woman that was bent over in Luke 13 for 18 years, she had 18 years. The Lord says you've had some kind of infirmity for almost that long, maybe 18 years. Or the woman with the issue of blood, uh, she had it for 12 years and she wasted all that she had on doctors. It said, but she said within herself, that means you got to talk to yourself. It said David encouraged himself in the Lord. Hallelujah. So you have to, she said within herself, 
myself. If I can but touch the hem of his garment, I will be made whole again. So somebody's just got to reach out today and touch the hem of Jesus' garment because Jesus is coming by. I told you that the train of the robe is filling the temple. As Isaiah saw in Isaiah chapter 6, that the train of the robe, his robe was filling the temple. So reach out and grab as Jesus begins to walk by. Uh, grab the hem of his garment and you shall be healed. I prophesy healing on this line. Right now, the healing anointing is flowing. Right now, thank you for K being healed right now. Hey, K is being healed right now. Receive it. And the Lord said, just as the lepers were cleansed as they went, the Lord said, so as you go, you will be cleansed. You will be healed. I don't know some kind of unclean spirit. You know what I'm talking about or what the Lord's talking about. But a vexing, uh, unclean spirit came into you. And I bind it. And I command an unclean spirit to come out. And I call the spirit of burning and judgment, uh, which will cleanse the residue that the spirit left. Because when these demon demon spirits come in us, they leave a residue. Um, and the Lord is saying that the residue is being cleansed by the refiner's fire and the full of soap. Because Jesus has said, Malachi 3, 2, is he not like a refiner's fire and like a full of soap? So what does soap do? Uh, a fire uh, purifies and soap cleanses. Hallelujah. So that soap is purify, or the refiner's fire is purifying, but the soap is cleansing out the residue, I prophesy. Uh, to you, Kay, and to everybody else receiving healing on this line right now. Helene, God bless you, woman of God. Helene, we just thank you for Helene. I just pray for Helene as she's going to get her new apartment or new house. God said, if a uh, woman of God, just expect a new house by 2021, a new place. I'm moving you um, and expect that finances are coming in supernaturally. And know that I'm giving you something to do that will be easier for you to do. Even know that everybody else is in a famine. You will prosper in the time of famine. The Lord said the wealth of the sinner is laid up for the just. Uh, Proverbs 13, 22 for you, Helene. The wealth of the sinner is laid up for the just. So if somehow God's going to give you a way to take money from the sinner or, or the wealth of the sinner and bring it into your own bank account. And the Lord said, when I do that for you, daughter, make sure that you sow a seed and give, not just to me, to, in the kingdom of God. I'm not, 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 not soliciting seeds. What I'm saying is God said, make sure you give your first fruits to God. When God prospers for you, you got to give your first fruits unto God. Um, and a lot of times you have stopped your and this can be for Helene, but for everybody, you've stopped the flow of the finances coming in because you stopped giving. Okay, so the Lord is saying, even on this line, if God is moving you to give, you can sow a seed into this onto this line. Not for me, but it's because God said, Matthew ten forty one, if you receive a prophet in the name of a prophet, you will receive a prophet's reward. And so it's not. It's not something for me, but if you sow a seed, you will receive a prophet's reward. Um, because if you sow back into somebody who's pouring out to you. And so that's just a side note, but just it's not to spoil anybody's time because you don't have to sow and you can still be blessed. The gospel is free. I preach the gospel of free. Um, and so let's just keep moving on. I risk God bless you. But I believe what the Lord was saying for you, Helene, is that don't stop giving. That's that's the message. As that um uh um sometimes you can stop the flow of the finances coming in because you stop giving. Okay? Because give and it shall be given unto you. Pressed out, shake it together, run it over, shall men give into your bosom with the same measure you meet with all to be bet back to you. So the Lord is the law of reciprocity. It got it, it if you give it'll come back. And so don't worry about that you don't think you have enough money. Everybody, the Lord is saying, uh, people aren't giving because they think they don't have enough money. But the Lord is saying, it is when you loose the seed that I can bring more in. And so don't hoard your seed, the Lord is saying. Um, and so I had to speak what the Holy Spirit is saying. Thank you, Lord. For Iris, Alicia, uh, Alicia, God bless you. Alicia, I thank you for Alicia right now. In Jesus' name, we just thank you right now for the woman of God. We pray for your family. Uh, I see someone in your family you've been praying for, and it's like they, I seen someone incarcerated in your family, or they've been incarcerated, it's like they have a spirit of incarceration, whether they've been incarcerated, and also like a, 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 an addictive spirit or something, but right now I'm going to pray for any addictions on this line, this can be for you, woman of God, somebody in your family, or you, or somebody around you, but I bind the spirit of incarceration, I take authority over the spirit of addiction, right now, every addiction i break it right now i pray to free people from addiction 
Christians uh, and anybody that's been incarcerated or the spirit of captivity, I declare that God is freeing people from captivity today. That I break that um, some kind of incarcerated type spirit it may be just because somebody's been locked away uh in their house from COVID-19 or something but this causes an incarceration type spirit and there's also another spirit that comes with that um uh, I got to think of the name of it. Incarceration. Help me with discerning of spirits, Holy Ghost. Uh, uh, discerning of spirits. Incarceration. And it also causes you to be uh, 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 stuck into like, I can't remember the name of it. But thank you, Father. Just free these people from that right now, Lord. Incarceration uh, and being just uh, 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 stuck in a, in a place where they can't get out. It's just like captivity, spirit of captivity. I break it right now in Jesus' name. And I also thank you, uh, uh, Alicia, right now. Also, I just pray right now, the Lord is going to loose um, an idea to you because you have a you have a business plan, but you don't really have it all completely together. The Lord said, I'm loosing a business plan to you, woman of God. Uh, and something that you can do, there's like three or four outlets I see or inlets of finances that are coming in. The Lord said that I'm giving you ideas on how to market certain things, uh, even time during the time of COVID and things like that, where the world is. And there will be ways that you will make money, I prophesy, that that, that were not thought about before. The Lord said, um, it's like an invention spirit. I see... Uh, Proverbs 8 and 12, I will give you knowledge of witty ideas and inventions. And so God said, I'm going to give you that spirit and all, knowledge of witty ideas and witty inventions. Proverbs 8 and 12. I want you to read the whole uh, chapter of Proverbs 8. Witty ideas and ideas and inventions. Stuff that people have never thought of before, I prophesy, that is coming into your mind. And the Lord said, it will come as you pray in the Holy Ghost. As you pray, it will come. Uh, and it will come into your mind. The Lord said, because it will put away your uh, a free frontal cortex or your logical mind so that the spiritual man or the spiritual mind can come the pneumaticos that was the word pneumaticos the spiritual man um and paul said this the, the natural man does not receive the same the 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 things of the spirit because they are spiritually discerned but you got a supernatural um discernment also so i pray for the gift of discernment and the gift of discerning of spirits also so so discernment and discerning of spirits are different uh, discernment is hebrews 5 14 that strong meat belongs to those who are full age who have their senses exercised thereby to know both good and evil so the discernment is you've had your supernatural senses exercised to know both good and evil but the discerning of spirits is a gift of the holy ghost to discern evil spirits like i'm discerning what kind of evil spirit uh people are fighting against or i'll see an evil spirit in someone's body that's the gift of discerning of spirits that's a gift a supernatural gift did you get to discern Discernment will show you uh, somebody's human spirit, but the gift of discerning spirits will show you what kind of demon spirit. Or it can be a fallen angel, which is a principality. It'll show you five things. The gift, of, and this is also continuing for you. Um, it's showing you five things right now. One is a fallen angel or a messenger of Satan. Uh, uh, two would be an unclean spirit or a disembodied spirit that comes in into our body, right? Uh, and, and three would be a human spirit. If it, what kind of human spirit, right? Uh, and, and the fourth would be the Holy Spirit. So you want to be able to to discern. Is it the Holy Spirit, right? Or is it a fallen angel of Satan? Or is it an angel of God? And the fifth would be an angel of God. Okay, so there will be a difference between an angel of God speaking to you and a messenger of Satan or an anglios, a Moloch of Satan. So there's fallen angels that try to appear as an angel of light and try to speak to you, and they try to appear as a uh, angel of God. And so I prophesy to you that God has given you the gift of discerning of spirits right now. I release the gift of discerning of spirits right now. Thank you in Jesus' name. Right now. Right now. Thank you, Lord. Alicia, yeah, that's for you. Hallelujah. That's for you. Thank you, Lord. That gift of discerning of spirits is coming on you right now in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord.
Thank you, Lord. All of a sudden, your eyes are opening. I pray as as, Gehaz, as Elisha prayed for Gehazi, 2 Kings 6, 17, open the eyes of my servant that he may see. And so I declare that your eyes are being opened. You will see the horses and chariots of Israel, the horses and chariots of fire all around you. Hallelujah. And the Lord said, there is more for you than are against you. You will begin to see more for you around you, all the angels around you, and the hosts of angels uh, are more for you than are against you. And the Lord said that I'm going to make my angels fight for you. You will not have to fight for this in this one, said the Lord. Exodus 14, 14 Stand still and see the f salvation of the Lord. For the battle is not yours, but it belongs to God. Hallelujah. The battle is not yours, but it is my battle. The Lord said, I'm going to fight for you in this fight. Stand still. The Lord said to you, woman of God and see the salvation of the Lord hallelujah we thank you Lord for that word right now thank you for prophetess Linda Pickens hallelujah um have I seen Catherine Catherine teach hallelujah that is a very prophetic name Catherine teach and that is because the Lord said you can teach hallelujah that is that you have the 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 the, the mantle of a teacher hallelujah see names are prophetic people names are prophetic the Lord said that you are a teacher my God Catherine Catherine, you, you, you're one to instruct people. You just have a supernatural IQ, the Lord said. I've given you a supernatural mind. Uh, you can just teach things. You can see, um, patterns and you can see, um, quote, you know, uh, you can see different, um, you know, mathematics that other people can't see. Not many people are smart in mathematics, but the Lord said you can see different, uh, geometries and algebra and things like that. And the Lord said, I'll show you different things and also very wise in the English language. Language. And the Lord said, I'm going to use you to teach people, but also to teach them the things of the kingdom. The Lord said, I'm teaching you to teach others about me, says the Spirit of God. Uh, and so you are a very powerful teacher, and I thank you for Catherine. Right now, I, I just pray for Catherine. Uh, her family right now certain people that you've been worried about in your family the Lord said don't worry about it because the Lord said there are many people in your family you've been praying for that are going to get saved I see many people in your family getting saved the Lord said even in the next year and it is your prayers that are going to save your family members so the Lord said to keep praying uh, everybody on here that you're praying for family members to get saved I prophesy salvation is coming to your house uh, I, I prophesy a Joshua 24 15 hallelujah as for me and my house we will serve the Lord Joshua 24 15 hallelujah as for me and my house will serve the Lord and that's what I see you saying Catherine you keep saying to your family as for me and my house you can go serve those gods in Egypt but as for me and my house we will serve the Lord hallelujah we will serve the Lord and we will give reverence to God in this house hallelujah and God is going to honor you for that says the Lord you're going to teach people about about me says God and you're going to teach people the fear of the Lord and and quick understanding in the fear of the Lord Isaiah 11 1 through 3 I prophesy the sevenfold spirit of God is coming upon you which is Jesus Christ because he is the one of the spirit of understanding the spirit of counsel the spirit of wisdom the spirit of might the spirit of knowledge the spirit of fear of the Lord he is the uh, sevenfold spirit of the holy intensified full holy spirit so when that spirit of Jesus Christ comes he is the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy and so you will begin to prophesy I also woman of God I prophesy you will prophesy hallelujah you will begin to prophesy thank you Lord the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of the prophet's word hallelujah uh, revelation 19 10 thank you Lord for people beginning to prophesy on here all that are on here right now that are on here that follow this line begin to prophesy God bless you pastor Aruko from Kenya man of God I just continue to pray for you I pray that you continue to get that rest that I prayed about uh, and God wants you to rest at night time but also he's going to open those dreams and visions more and you will see people's faces when I show you different people's faces in your dreams I want you to know that I want you to intercede for these people says the Lord I want you to begin to pray for people that I show you in, in your dreams pastor the Lord is saying begin to pray for the people that I show you and it is your prayers that will break off the power of the wicked uh, man against your life the Lord is saying because it will heap 
coals upon their head. The Lord is saying to overcome evil with good because when you overcome evil with good, you will heap coals of fire on their head. And so the Lord is saying to, to, to go a mile. If they ask you to go one mile, uh, go two miles. If they ask for your tunic, give them your cloak also. Uh, and just all outdo them with goodness, says the Spirit of God. And they're not going to be able um, to hold any more against you, says the Lord. Um, because you will have such Christian piety and character that they will have nothing else to say about you, I prophesy, in the name of Jesus. And so I just pray and I thank you for the man of God. I thank you for his ministry. I thank you that he strengthened him right now in the prophetic mantle uh, as he even opens his mouth and begins to prophesy more and more. We just thank you for the gift of prophecy moving um, uh, and just that uh, power of prophecy coming upon you right now, the spirit of prophecy. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for Dor Dorsey Cox, uh, K. Faith Robinson. We thank you for everyone continuing to come on from yesterday. Kalisha, um, is there, uh, who was that that was messaging me? Uh, I'm trying to see if they're on here. Uh, Woman of God, uh, not Martha. Let me, I got to remember uh, who it was that was messaging me. Um, but I'll look in a minute. So let me see. Um, Andrea Campbell, God bless you. Shanique Davis, hallelujah. Shanique Davis, hallelujah for Shanique right now. I just thank you for Shanique right now. Thank you, Lord. As you're just moving in her life right now, you're breaking off all the old memories. The Lord is saying, Shanique, I'm, God is breaking off old memories. He's coming through and washing your, your memory system. Um, anything, any hurt or pain, rejection, um, any rejection system of dysphoria, God is, is bearing your griefs, carrying your sorrows, all sorrows he's going to break off. You're just going to re receive some relaxation tonight. It's almost going to be like you just took a, a, a supernatural volume. Uh, and the Lord says you just begin to calm down. And the Lord said, because I'm breaking off that tension. I just see like a tension headache right now. I take authority over tension in your mind. I break the stronghold of tension and friction right now. I rebuke it right now in Jesus name. I thank you Lord for supernatural shalom peace uh, coming on Shanique. Yes, yes, yes. Hallelujah. And right now, we just thank you, Lord. You're just going to feel it, woman of God. I just want you to open up your arms. When we open our arms and we praise, it means we're receiving. And so when you open up so so the Lord can come in. It says, um, Psalm 24 says, Lift up your hands, O you gates, and the King of glory will come in. Who is the King of glory? The Lord, mighty in battle, right? And so the King of glory. So as we lift up our hands, it means Jesus can come in and begin to restore our soul. And so I declare, as you praise God, as you worship Him in spirit and truth, then the King of glory is going to come in, Shanique, and begin to cleanse out all the residue that people left from hurting you. Even family members, I don't know. It's just like family members, uh, uh, ex-boyfriends or a husband or somebody uh, uh, that really abused you, uh, wasn't good to you. God wants to wipe all that out, man. He just wants you to start a new slate. He said, I love you, daughter. I love you with an everlasting love, with loving kindness. I've, I've drawn you. I brought you, brought you back to me because I'm a father to you and I love you. You're my daughter and I'm your father. I will father you. The Lord said, I want to father you, daughter. Let me father you. Let me be as a father to you. Let me hold you. Worship me and, and praise me and thank me for everything that I'm going to do. Because I'm going to do such a quick work in your life that you will not even recognize yourself uh, in a few in a, in a few weeks, the Lord said. You will not even recognize yourself in the mirror because your countenance will change so much because my glory is going to come and cleanse out all that residue that the devil lost, all the stronghold. The Lord said, Jesus Christ said, Isaiah 53, 4, 5, that Jesus bore your griefs and he carried your sorrows. And so he was not only uh, bruised for your iniquity, which is for physical healing, but he was carried your 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 griefs and sorrows for your psychological and your emotional healing. And the Lord said, I'm going to emotionally heal your emotions and your psyche. You will begin to think better, says the Lord. 
uh, you'll begin to think more clear, I prophesy right now, uh, clarity in your visions and dreams, clarity in your thoughts right now. The Lord is saying, I bear in your griefs, care in your sorrows. I was wounded for your transgressions, bruised for your iniquity. The chastisement of my peace is upon you. I decree and declare by the stripes of Jesus, you're healed right now. Receive the healing anointing right now. The Lord says, 2 Peter 2, 24, Jesus Christ took upon his own body, upon the cross, upon the tree, our sin, that we being dead to sin might live unto righteousness by whose stripes we were healed. So we were healed 2,000 years ago see all your sin sickness and shame going on the cross of the Lord Jesus Christ because he already took it 2,000 years ago hallelujah he doesn't want you to suffer anymore he wants you to see his sin and sickness and death that that fear of death those people that have had fear of death all their life I also break that fear of death off you woman of God right now I break the fear of death right now I rebuke it I declare eternal life is coming through Christ Jesus right now uh, and the spirit of eternal life thank you God for a resurrection power. A resurrection power is lifting you up right now. You're going to feel yourself arise in the spirit as you praise and you worship him in spirit and truth. The Lord said you're rising up out of the ashes. Hallelujah. Of the ashes of torment. I bind the spirit of torment. I took authority over that spirit of trauma that caused you to just be in trauma all your life. Like just traumatic experience. It's like you almost died one time. And that is where the spirit of death came in. The Lord is saying like you, you, you were in some kind of accident or something. And you almost died. And the spirit of death came into your soul. Right now I rebuke that spirit of death that came in. Uh, and I command that spirit to go in Jesus name. Leave. Leave her soul. Leave. Lee planet earth in Jesus name we have a name above every name at the name of Jesus we declare every knee shall bow every tongue shall confess to the glory of God the Father where in the heavens the earth and under the earth hallelujah so right now um, God has given you power over the law of sin and death death will not have any more dominion over you the Lord is saying no more will you see nightmares of death. The Lord said, I even see you seeing some kind of nightmare where you thought you were going to die. I see you see burning buildings or something. Um, but the Lord is saying, because I have shown you cer certain things in dreams, um, I'm trying to get to you in the prophetic realm of dreams. Uh, but the enemy has come in and put dreams into your mind. And in the place of where God's trying to give you prophetic dreams. My God. So the Lord is saying that I'm gonna I'm gonna rebuke the demonic cauterize the realm of the demonic in your dreams and I'm gonna declare that there's a there's a supernatural portal open into your dreams. Uh, Jacob's ladder, Genesis 28, 12, 17. And so right now I, I bind the demonic realm in her dreams. I cauterize it in the realm of the spirit. I send fire of the Holy Ghost to cauterize the demonic portal. I take authority over the subconscious uh the subconscious realm, because Ecclesiastes says a dream comes to the multitude of busyness. And so I took authority over those subconscious dreams also, and I cauterize the demonic portal, and I declare, Ephetha, the heavens are opened, and a supernatural ladder of Jacob's ladder is coming down into your dreams. Genesis 28, 12, 17, and the Lord is looking over down into your dreams. And I prophesy God is going to visit you in your dreams. I prophesy your prophetic dreams are opening. Where the place of nightmares were, I bind the mare spirit. I take authority over nightmares. I rebuke nightmares right now. I declare that prophetic dreams and visions are coming right now. A dream, a dream of the Lord is coming right now. Dreams and visions. We impart dreams and visions for it will come to pass in the last days afterward. I will pour out of my spirit upon all flesh. Your sons and your daughters will prophesy. Your young men will see visions and your older men will dream dreams. The Lord said, I'll pour out of my spirit on my handmaids and my hand servants and they shall also prophesy. And so the Lord said, as I pour my spirit out upon you, woman of God, now you will begin to prophesy on my handmaids. Maidens. That means on women and men. So I'm pouring it on, on women's servants and men's servants. Hallelujah. Isabel, God bless you. Andrea Cam Campbell, God bless you. Hallelujah. So yeah, that dream interpret dreams are coming. I prophesy in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. And so I just I've seen a couple other people I wanted to get, and I'm glad you got that woman of God. Uh and, and God bless you, uh Natasha Spencer. God bless you, Tamia, my daughter, Tamia Donaldson, Isabel. Uh, Courtney, yes, 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 Jesus, right now, right now, 
uh, Andrea Campbell. I just uh, pray for Andrea. Lord, just strengthen her in the prophetic uh, mantle uh, in the area of, of, of miracles and healing. The Lord is saying, I'm imparting miracles and healing. Lord, the Lord said, I will show signs and wonders through the ministry of the apostles and prophets. And I want you to read this scripture because the Lord is saying, I'm going to use you as a, also uh, Andrea, uh, as a deliverer. The Lord is saying, there's a there's a prophecy of Zechariah in cha uh, Luke chapter 1. I want you to read this because the Lord said, I'm going to use you to set people free from this uh this fear of death and the pains of death. And I also see that prophecy of Zechariah is on your life. And this is what it says. I better get this Bible out. Hold on a second. Okay, so the prophecy of Zechariah. Let's look at it in Luke chapter uh, Luke chapter 1. And this is what Zechariah prophesied by the Holy Ghost. Listen to this. Behold the Lord of Israel, for he has visited and redeemed his people and has raised up a horn of salvation for us in the house of his servant David. Of course, we know that's Jesus Christ. That's a prophecy of the Messiah. But the Lord said this is a twofold prophecy for you, uh, Andrea. And he says this, verse 72, to perform mercy, hallelujah, as he promised to by the fathers and to remember his holy covenant, hallelujah. Uh, and that we should be saved out of our enemies, from our enemies, and from the hand of those who hate us. And he said also that we should, he should grant us that we should be delivered, hallelujah, uh, out of the hand of our enemies, that we might serve him without fear. And so God is saying, I'm giving you a mantle to help deliver people out of the hand of their enemies that they can serve him without fear. And so God is saying, like, I'm breaking, I'm giving you a deliverance mantle that will help people get broken um, from those things that the enemies, that they're attacking them. And as they get free, not just the devil, but but people and enemies. And the Lord said, you'll give them a place of refuge. It's like a... a it's like an Andrea's house or something. It's like a, a house of refuge. It may even be for trafficked or abused children or women that you're going to hide people. You're going to set them free from their enemies. I prophesy. The Lord said it could be, you know, like trafficked uh, children or women that are abused. My God, thank you, Jesus. Women that have been abused by their husbands. The Lord said that you're going to hide them out. It's like a, a, a house, a, a safe house. My God. It's like the underground railroad uh, uh, that they had back in the days of slavery. Uh, the, the underground railroad, like an underground church movement, a railroad, somewhere where you can hide persecuted uh, Christians and people. Uh, it's just some place. Uh, I don't know. I just see chambers where you're hiding people and it's more than one house. Um, and I don't know if there's persecution coming to the church. It may be in, 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 in other countries like the church in China or Iran where they have to go underground. But some God's going to do something with you. And he's going to give you a deliverance and healing and a miracle mantle. And you will literally pray for people and they will get instant healing and instant miracles. I prophesy. And so we thank you, Lord, for that prophecy right now. I seal it right now in the blood of Jesus Christ right now. I thank you, God, for every prophecy loose on this line right now. My God, thank you, uh, Lord, for these prophecies. We thank you for everybody on. We thank you that people keep coming back on. Uh, Natasha Spencer, God bless you. The Lord is going to continue to, uh, to, to, to use you greatly. And the Lord said that miracle mantle is coming on you. But the Lord said, I'm also giving you a miracle today. The Lord said, a miracle is coming to your house. You've been praying for that miracle in your finances. And God said, get ready. Uh, I want you to testify when you see that money come in in this next week. I want you to send me a message and testify and confirm that God's miracle came in, that your miracle money came in, says the Spirit of God. So I prophesy your miracles coming. The Lord said your miracles coming, woman of God. Hallelujah. And sometimes God doesn't give me a lot of specifics. He just tells me to tell them a miracle's coming. Hallelujah. Kamisha Horton, the Lord is saying unto you uh, that God is going to great, greatly use you also in the area of, of, of financial prosperity. The Lord is saying like a kingdom financier. I see you have very strong um, uh, uh, business skills like a uh, 
uh, accounting type skills. I don't know. The Lord is saying, I'm going to use you as an accountant. And I also see you helping pastors and leaders uh, in, in, in the gifts of helps and governments also in the church. First Corinthians 12, 28. Uh, you have a lot of gifts of governments and helps that you have never even tapped into. And the Lord says you will tap once again into the helps and governments um, because many underground Man, hallelujah, thank you, Holy Ghost. Many underground churches are starting because of COVID-19 and other things. Uh, but it's not really an underground. It's just an apostolic prophetic uh, mantle. It's like apostolic prophetic houses of prayer. Uh, Isaiah 56, 7, uh, you, you know, the Lord said that my house shall be called the house of prayer to all nations, but you have made it a den of thieves. And so in many, many houses of prayer, I see even um, being part of planting churches or planting houses of prayer, uh, end time houses of prayer in people's houses, like I prophesied the book of Acts, uh, house churches, they went from house to house and broke bread and they were all in singleness of heart. So they, they had all things in common. They even sold all their possessions. And they came and put them before the apostles feet. And they distributed. Everyone had need. And so that. You know a lot of these apostles preach well. You come and throw your um, uh, uh, seat at my feet. But really that means that they threw it at his feet. At the apostles feet. So he could distribute it. So everyone would have even provision. That's really the purpose of throwing the money. At the apostles feet. Uh, and so I just see it. A, a last days axe movement. Where you're going to have go from house to house. It's going to be a miracle ministry. As I prophesy out of church. Home churches. I prophesy home churches are coming. Don't think that you have to. Um, necessarily go to a building. Because you are the church. Okay. And that the church goes wherever you go. Hallelujah. Wherever there is an ecclesia. Uh, assembly of Christians. But the Lord said to forsake not the assembling of ourselves. As the manner of some is. So we do want churches to open back in. I, 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 I Back again. And so I take authority over any kind of closure to churches. Any spirit that's keeping keeping the churches closed. We prophesy churches are opening, assemblies are opening, pastors and leaders on this line. God's opening your church again, even with COVID-19 um, and, and members are coming back into your church. Uh, I prophesy that um, your uh, uh, your honorariums will rise again. Uh, people are going to start giving again. I prophesy giving again. God, people will start sowing again. I declare that God is filling the pockets of God's people that they can sow once again. They can give into the kingdom uh, and that they can continue to give to their pastors and support the leaders of God. So I prophesy churches are opening uh, new new apostolic ministries, apostolic prayer houses, apostolic prayer hubs, miracle ministries are coming. I prophesy in Jesus' name, God has prepared many people on this line to start a, a prophetic movement, an apostolic church, apostolic hub. The Lord said that that vision, I've made it plain to you today. Many of you, uh, you've got an inspiration from my Holy Spirit as you've been on this line. The Lord said, my inspiration is coming to you. Tamisha, that is for you. Prophetess Tamisha, uh, God is saying, I've given you an inspiration to open a miracle ministry in your home. I've given you a home, a new home. I'm going to give you uh, even a bigger home. Um, and, and you'll be training young women uh, and tra training like prophets and prophetesses. And you will have a house of prayer, says the Lord. Uh, I take authority over that spirit coming against your mind. Prophetess Tamisha, and, and it's not something that you have, it's just the enemy is attacking you because you have a, such a wise mind, and the enemy doesn't like your mind because you have a high IQ, uh, and the Lord doesn't, I mean, the enemy doesn't like it, and so right now, you're gonna, you already feel a lot freer, even since we talked yesterday or the day before, the Lord's saying that that, that, that stronghold is broken off your mind, uh, you'll think a lot freer from now on, I prophesy in the name of Jesus. I, I keep seeing, I, I want to say uh, ah, where is she? She was on my, um, I wanted to find her, and I gotta remember her name, though. Um, uh, God bless you, Melissa. Hallelujah, Melissa. God bless you. Uh, I'm trying to get as many people as I can. Remember that I'm prophesying all week, Monday through Friday. Um, I may come on once or twice a day from, uh, uh, from 12 p.m. Eastern Standard Time to 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So um, I'm going to be coming on again, maybe today. If I don't come on today, but I'm going to be on tomorrow and Friday also. So um, 
right now we're just gonna um close it up right now because i just feel the 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 the, the, the spirit slowing down a little bit um and so uh, i also want to look on some of the messages i got and so if you if i didn't get you on this line Remember, I may be on later tonight or tomorrow or the next day. So continue to come on. Uh, if I didn't get you, continue to come on and I'll be prophesying over you. But you can also pick up uh, prophetically what has been spoken over the whole body of Christ because it's been loosed over the whole body. There's been a lot of pr prophetic declarations on this line. There's been a lot of worship. Uh, we praise the Lord in the beginning, and even the devil tried to break our connection. I had to start the live over, but we thank God that he showed up. We praise and worship you, Jesus. Uh, uh, the testimony of Jesus, the spirit of prophecy that is on here. We thank you for the witness of Jesus as the spirit of the prophet's word, and so the prophet's word that has gone forth is the testimony testimony of Jesus. We continue to pr bless and, and praise the name of Jesus right now. I thank you for everybody on the line. I say an Arianic blessing over you right now. Number 6, 24 through 26. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon everyone and be gracious unto you. And may the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his shalom, supernatural peace. Because God loves everybody. He loves you with an everlasting love. Uh, everybody that has been feeling hurt or pain, God is going to comfort you. I declare that the comfort of the Holy Spirit, your paracletus, your helper, is coming alongside to help you today. He's your comforter, your guide, your teacher. He will bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever he said unto you he also show you things to come and he's also the paracletus meaning he helps to pull a paraclete pulls something along along helps you to pull the weight and so god said the paraclete the the holy spirit is coming to help you the holy ghost uh, hallelujah is coming along to uh, to give you comfort today and teach you and show you things to come also he's also prophesying hallelujah the Holy Spirit is prophesying through the scriptures also. Uh, uh, 2 Peter 1, 19-21, God, uh, Peter the Apostle said through the inspiration of the Holy Spirit that we have a more sure word of prophecy where you unto you to do well to take heed as a light that shines in a dark place till the day dawn and the day star arises in your heart. Hallelujah. And that's, that's the prophecy of the scripture. And so no prophecy of the scriptures of any private interpretation, but holy men of God moved as they were uh, carried along by the Holy Spirit, uh, not by the will of man, but by the will of God. But the prophecy of the scriptures, hallelujah, the prophecy of our scripture is a more sure word of prophecy. And so we want to stay in the, the Logos. Uh, the Logos also, um, and the Rhema. So we, I declare that the, the Holy Spirit is going to be prophesying through the Logos word. Hallelujah. So know that the Holy Spirit is going to be prophesying through the, the Logos word too. So get back into your word. Make sure you stay in your Bible. Because I prophesy God is prophesying through the word. Hallelujah. And so I love you guys. Um, I bless you in the name of the Lord. I say that you are blessed. You are blessed. Uh, God is commanding the blessing on your storehouses. He's commanding the blessing in the field, the blessing in the city. You're blessed coming in. You're blessed going out. Uh, you're above only and not beneath. You're the head and not the tail. He's broken off many curses on this line. I, I prayed for a curse-breaking prayer earlier. If you go back and listen, there was a curse-breaker, uh, and the Lord had declared that many blessings, and he was commanding the blessing also on people's storehouses, meaning in your bank accounts. So I prophesy the blessing blessing is coming in your bank account. Uh, look for supernatural finances coming. I prophesy supernatural financial provision um, is coming in this next week, the Lord is saying. So look for it. 24-hour miracles. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And so the Lord is just saying, um, if you want to sow into this word, words, you can. There's a PayPal and there's a Cash App on uh, uh, there. If you want to sow into it, you can, but you don't have to. Just go by the moving of the Holy Spirit, and I'll talk to you later. Look for me coming out uh, later tonight or tomorrow, the next day. If I missed you, uh, I'm coming for you. Because as I'm praying, I'm fasting and praying, and the Lord is putting certain people's names uh, and pictures uh, in my mind. Um, so people I'm praying for you be a, before I even get to you. Um, you know, that's what God gives the prophet that we pray for people, uh, intercede for people as God puts you in my spirit. And so even on here, when I prophesy, it's because God, God has put you in my spirit. It's not because I forgot about someone. It's just that the Holy Spirit is 
telling me to pray for that specific person because it may be something that that person needs right now that could save their life. Come on, somebody. As the body of Christ, we want to um, uh, deny ourselves, pick up our cross daily and follow Jesus. And that means denying what we need sometimes um, to love and pray for someone else that may need us, okay? And so this is what uh, the Lord said. I got to give one more scripture because uh, he keeps moving me on this. Um, but he says that Romans, I got to look up the scripture, but uh, it says that we who are strong ought to embur uh we who are strong ought to bear the infirmities of the weak. Okay, that's what the scripture says. It says we who are strong should bear the infirmities of the weak. And so God, if God has made you strong, you should try to help someone else and bear their infirmity of the weak. Okay, and so God has made you strong so that you can help bear someone else's infirmity. You know what I mean? And so if God has made you strong, it's not just for you. It's for someone else, right? And I, I'd have to look up that scripture. I had it right in front of me, but I but I lost it. Uh, anyway, I thank God for this line. I seal every prophecy right now in the blood of Jesus Christ. I bless everyone in the name of the Lord. And we thank you, God, for showing up powerfully and mightily on this line, Jesus, the spirit of prophecy, the testimony of Jesus. And we thank you, Jesus. And we continue always to give you all the praise, glory, and honor for every word spoken, every miracle, every healing, every impartation, every activation of spiritual gifts, every office. Uh, people were anointed into certain offices. Uh, the prayer, uh, the anointing of the Holy Ghost. We thank you for the anointing being poured out upon this line right now, every day, even as it was the third day. And you know what? The third day is very important because threes are very important anyway. Father, Son, Holy Ghost, right? But the third day, Jesus rose again and fulfilling the scriptures. And this is the third day that we've been doing this prophecy line. And so I can feel that the anointing every day is amping up and getting stronger. So as the saints continue to pray, continue to pray, uh, as the saints continue to pray, the anointing of the Holy Ghost will get stronger and stronger, I prophesy, in Jesus' name. And we'll get more people um, saved. Also, there could be the overflow of of, of salvation. Uh, I prophesy people will even watch this and get saved that need salvation. People maybe in your family. So share this on your um, page if you feel led to. And maybe people, the Lord is saying... People can just watch it because it is by the demonstration of the Holy Ghost and power that brings unbelievers to the Lord Jesus. And this is why God said that I will, I bore witness, Hebrews 2 and 4, God bearing them witness also both with signs and wonders, hallelujah, and with diverse miracles and gifts of the Holy Ghost according to his own will. So it is the demonstration of spirit and power that brings unbelievers to God because they say, wow, look at that. Wow, uh, this God is powerful, right? And so it is God. This is what Paul said. The apostle said this. He said, I come not only to you and enticing words of man's wisdom, but I come unto you in a demonstration of spirit and power, that your faith might not only stand in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God, right? And so when, when unbelievers see the power of God demonstrated, that is the Kratos power of God, that is the resurrection power of Jesus Christ, when they see the power of God demonstrated on a line, like this line is when they bring him to Christ. It brings them to salvation. That's why I'm saying apostles, prophets, pastors, evangelists, and leaders on here. If God's given you that power to demonstrate, the Lord is saying you need to demonstrate more in your church services. Um, you can preach the message because you should always preach the word first. Notice that I preach a word and then I demonstrate. And so you need to preach the gospel uh, in case there's somebody that needs to hear the gospel. And then you need to allow the Holy Ghost to demonstrate uh, with the gifts of the Spirit, okay, with miracles and healing, prophecy, signs, wonders, okay, and so that's what you do, you preach, and then you just allow the Holy Spirit to demonstrate, okay, and, and, and then do altar calls, and so some, some pastors and leaders, apostles on here, the Lord is saying to you that even God's going to show you a different way to run your church service, some people that that are hearing this message, the Lord is saying, I'm giving you even an instruction how 
to run your church service with demonstration of the Holy Ghost and power, with spiritual gifts, with signs and wonders and miracles. I prophesy miracles right now are coming to different pastors, leaders, uh, mantles of miracles, signs and wonders right now in Jesus' name. So I thank you, God, for everyone. I bless them all in the name of Jesus. God bless you. We'll see you in the next hour or two, or if not today, I'll see you tomorrow and Friday. God bless you. If I missed you, I'm coming for you. Hallelujah. I'm coming for the people that I didn't get. Uh, uh, Miller, James, and all that. Uh, you people that just came on, I'll be coming for you. Um, so watch for me in the next day or two. I probably won't come back on tonight, but I probably be. I might. It just depends on what's happening around the house. Sometimes it gets too hectic. Um, but I'll be on tomorrow and the next day. Hallelujah. Uh, yeah, the third day. Yes, Miller, James. Hallelujah. Yes, the third day. And uh, I think it was, I'll have to look up the woman, woman of God's name that messaged me. But thank you everybody for sowing their seed. I seen somebody, a couple of people sowed a seed. Uh, Prophetess Tanya Miller, God bless you, woman of God. Thank you for sowing a seed, woman of God. I bless you in the name of the Lord. I bless your seed. I declare that God's going to, uh, uh, he's going to prosper you. He's going to uh, multiply your seed sown. Because the Lord said, when you sow a seed, that I'll multiply it. And so, Prophetess, uh, I love you in the name of the Lord. I thank you for your faithfulness and giving. Uh, and, and just everybody, um, even people that didn't give, it's just not, it's not about that. Um, um, but I, 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 but your faithfulness, God will reward you. And I, I prophesy a prophet's reward over you prophetess tanya god bless you uh the lord is going to give you a prophet's reward matthew 10 and 41 you receive a prophet in the name of a prophet he'll give you a prophet's reward and so i prophesy that prophet's reward woman of god tanya miller prophetess that you're going to start to prophesy a lot more meaning you're going to prophesy in everywhere everything that i move in the lord said that's the prophet's reward you're going to move in every every gift every miracle every sign every wonder and, and so will your family, so will Tamia, Tamisha, uh, uh, Malik, Taman, uh, uh, you know, uh, Melanie, uh, Jordaya, uh, Jasmine, all of them, and the young man, I think it is Jordan over there. Thank you, Lord. So all that family, uh, and we thank you for being a mother for that family, um, Prophetess Tanya. I bless you with the mother anointing. You like have a mother anointing where you can mother people, and the Lord said that that, that motherly love of yours has brought many sons and daughters to me says the lord so continue to love uh, uh people with that motherly love woman of god and i just bless you and i thank you i thank you for your faithfulness to this ministry uh and i bless you in the name of the lord jesus christ thank you lord for everyone god bless you love you we'll talk to you soon okay